Last month, my dad was rushed to hospital with chest pains and admitted to coronary care. He's 80, he's got dementia, and he's deaf as a post without his hearing aid. Next morning, my mum and I get called in for a chat with the consultant, who told us that dad's had a heart attack and another is expected very soon. And because of his dementia, they wouldn't do the stent procedure, which could potentially save his life. The consultant looks very sympathetic as he tells us all this. The procedure would be too dangerous, given your father's confusion. Confusion? I look to my mum, who now looks a bit confused herself. It's a very delicate operation, with a tube being inserted through the groin and up through a vein into his heart. Any sudden movement could be fatal, and if we can't communicate with him to explain all of this, why can't you communicate with him, I say. He pauses as if it's obvious. It says on his file he's got vascular dementia. I nod, well, yes, but he still understands things. The consultant looks unconvinced at me. I did try to talk to Mr Evans, but he didn't respond, he just looked blank. Now, I know my dad's got a few short-term memory problems, he's lost his motivation, but he's not that bad, is he? My mind starts whirring, trying to think, take it all in. When the doctor asks me, ma'am, if dad can feed and toilet himself, I can see the questions annoyed her. But she just smiles politely and puts on her best telephone voice. Yes, doctor, he can still feed and toilet himself. Well, the consultant scribbles notes. Imam looks like she wants to stab him with her fountain pen. I start asking questions. What are the chances of my dad having another heart attack? When's it likely to happen? What are his chances of surviving? It's not good news. And just as my mum's starting to realise the gravity of the situation, the consultant asks whether or not we'd like Dad resuscitated. They've been married for over 57 years, and in the space of a few minutes, she's supposed to answer that. Her bottom lip starts to quiver. My mum hardly ever cries. Well, not in front of us anyway. So I say, we've got to decide now. The consultant straightens a little and informs us that ultimately it's his decision. I think this is supposed to help. Mum's face is starting to crumple. It just seems so cruel. Mum's always trusted the NHS, always followed the advice of doctors, but I knew that if she agreed to a DNR, my dad did die. She'd never forgive herself. So I start to tell the consultant that my dad's dementia is not that bad, that he does have quality of life at home, that with help he can still enjoy a bet, do the Times crossword. He looks doubtfully at me, and I can tell by the way as a sly glance at his watch that he doesn't really have time for this. So we agree a compromise. See how my dad fares over the next 24 hours, and if the worst comes to the worst, they'll make some attempt to resuscitate. I decided then and there that I was going to stay with him. If he was going to have a heart attack, then I was going to make sure he got treated. And if he did die, then he'd not be alone. I'd be there to hold his hand. When we get back to Dad's room, a nurse is taking Dad's obs. She says, David, it's really important that you tell us if you're having any chest pain. I thought, pet, you're on a hiding to nothing there, short term memory shot. I, I mean, they're nurses. Surely they're trained in dementia. Anyway, my dad's not answering. I'm not sure whether he's just so ill he can't be bothered or, or he's just copping a deafen. Dad can do that when he doesn't want to talk. Either way, he's ignoring us, so I try to get his attention. Dad, are you having any chest pain? He doesn't answer. So I nudge him. He looks at me as if to say, stop prodding me, I'm ill. And then something just clicks. His hearing aid isn't working. So I take it off him and he offers his expert opinion. It's buggered. It usually whistles, drives a man mad when they're watching the telly. It definitely isn't working. So I ask the nurse if she's got any spare batteries. She hasn't. Or we'll have to go to audiology for batteries. So I hot foot it to the other side of the hospital. I thought my man would never have been able to do this. Not with her feet. So I fit the new batteries. Hearing aid starts to whistle. Thank God, 
Me dad's not daft, he's just deaf. So I rush back to the ward to give the consultant the good news. Maybe he'll do the stamp procedure after all. But by the time I get back, he's already gone home and he's not due back in till the morning. I just hope my dad makes it through the night. I tell me, mum, to go home, get some rest, get a prayer mat out. I didn't actually say that. So, me and my dad are left by ourselves. He's lying on the bed, I'm sat on the easy chair. I try not to think about what might happen. Thoughts of funeral hymns and obituaries dart through my mind. As I see my dad's hand move to his chest with a wince of pain. Dad, are you all right? I bet. My chest just feels a bit tight. I'm thinking, heart attack, heart attack, but I calmly get up and head for the door. Where are you going? To tell the nurses, oh, don't be bothering the nurses, I'm fine. Now, it's not just that he's a stubborn old git, which he is, or that he's typical war generation. I just think he was scared. Scared of admitting how bad he was. Scared of dying. At the nurses' station, they're sat laughing and joking. I tell them what's been going on and one of them rushes back to check his monitor. They can tell from a computer what I can tell by just looking at him. He's in pain. So they pump him up with painkillers and blood thinners and try and make him more comfortable. To cut a very long story short, I stay with him all night. He's very distressed. Kept wanting to go to the toilet, but he can't because of all the tubes in his arms and all the machines he's hooked up to. He's already forgotten about the catheter they've just fitted. Twice during the night, he pulled all the tubes and needles out of his arms as he attempted to get to the toilet. Blood spurted everywhere. I'd only been gone two minutes. I needed the loo and I told the nurse he was by himself. He was trying to get out of bed. It just seemed I was the only person keeping an eye on him, caring for him. After a long sleepless night, the sun started to rise. I was just so pleased we made it. When the consultant came to do his rounds, I think he was surprised to see my dad still alive, never mind sat up engrossed in the Times crossword. What's one down again, pet? Amend. Ten letters. R something something V, something L, something 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 E. Reevaluate, Dad says, quick as a flash. He was always brilliant at crosswords. Oh, hello, Doctor. I can see the consultant's mind working, ten to the dozen. He picks me Dad's notes up, starts flicking through them. Good morning, Mr Evans. How are you feeling today? Champion, Doctor. That's his standard reply whenever a medical professional asks how he is. Well, you certainly improved since yesterday. You seem a lot less confused. Dad seems very pleased with the good news. So I say, he couldn't hear you, Doctor. The batteries in his hearing aid weren't working. He should have seen his face. I've, um, I've been having a rethink. Aye, in the last five bloody seconds you have. I didn't actually say that. Well, I think we should probably go ahead with the stent procedure. So, this story has a happy ending. Dad got his stent and he's now making a full recovery. Well, as far as his heart's concerned. But I can't stop thinking. What would have happened if I wasn't there? If I hadn't noticed his hearing aid wasn't working? If I hadn't seen the pain he was in? If I'd been doing the crossword with him? Well... He'd probably be dead. <laughs>